Hello, and thanks for joining. Today, we're going to have a brief discussion and demonstration around SailPoint's integration with ServiceNow. This is intended to be a very high-level overview, and we'll give a couple of examples, and we'll take a look at a little bit of product. But if you would like more information or a more in-depth demonstration, please reach out at SailPoint.com, and in the top right-hand corner, click on Request a Demo. Today, I'll be your host. My name is Donovan Blaylock, and I'm a technology evangelist here at SailPoint. The integrations you see today come from essentially the fact that we're not only mutual partners of each other with ServiceNow, but we're also mutual customers. When we're dealing with customers that have both SailPoint and ServiceNow, there are three different integration sets we most commonly see. At the basic level, we want to have a connector into ServiceNow. This enables us to do all of our identity governance capabilities that we do with all the hundreds of applications we touch with ServiceNow. Joiner, mover, lever, understanding who has access to what inside ServiceNow, exposing that in certification campaigns and access reviews for people, also enabling people to request access inside our very easy interface, if that makes sense. The second most common integration is what we call a service desk integration. This integrates with ServiceNow's capability set around ticketing. So this can mean a couple of different things. This could be as simple as us automatically creating, populating, and closing tickets every time we create an account, create access, role membership, or group membership that, that is also exposed inside ServiceNow so those metrics are captured. Or it could be that we create a ticket through a process inside SailPoint and that process is waiting for somebody to update or to approve inside the ServiceNow construct and then we close loop remediate. Once they say that they've completed that task, we note that on our end. This would enable things that maybe are done outside our band of direct management also be noted inside their identity cubes on our side. So when auditors or managers are reviewing access, they see all of the access somebody has, not just the ones we provisioned. The next most common level of integration we call service catalog integration. This uses the rich API set inside ServiceNow for people to keep that very user-friendly interface that they're familiar with inside the ServiceNow construct. So somebody inside ServiceNow would enact one of our capability sets. They'd be either looking at what access somebody might have across the enterprise inside the ServiceNow console or requesting a role that we have that may traverse many different applications from right inside the ServiceNow console. That would actually be enacting sale point on the back end, unbeknownst to the user, we'd be running our separation duty checks, our approval steps, our verification this is right for that type of user. All those things would be happening on our back end. And once it's complete, we would update the user on the ServiceNow side that it is completed. So let's take a look at a brief demonstration of these things we just talked about. The first integration type we talked about was a connector. Here in my environment, you can see we have lots of connectors in this operational environment. Let's take a look at the ServiceNow one. Inside these connectors, they're all fairly similar. We want details about how to connect to it, the configuration, also the correlation. How we correlate the accounts on that particular application to the identity cubes we're aware of, where we store all the information about those particular people. In this case, this is our correlation engine. This can change from uh, you know, customer to customer. Um, but we also have information about all the different accounts. Today we're going to work on one of these, Adam. In here you can see inside Adam's account, this is the most current information we have when we queried ServiceNow about all of the access Adam has inside our ServiceNow instance. This is constantly updated, as well as it is for all the other applications we talked about. And this is why we do it. I'm now looking at Adam Kennedy's identity cube. Inside here we have all sorts of information. All the entitlements Adam has across the entire enterprise on all the critical systems. These are the roles that he belongs to. And these are all the individual entitlements, some of which are ServiceNow and some of which are other applications. The point is, we're a one-stop shop for all the access Adam has across all critical applications, how he got it, when he got it, who requested it, who approved it, and what are the timestamps for everything. This is extremely useful to auditors, to security researchers, and it also enables us to do very easy access certifications for business users like managers. The next type of integration we talked about 
was the ability to integrate with ticketing. Inside this scenario, we're going to, as the manager for Adam, request some additional access. Inside here, he can further dive down into what exactly he wants to look for on behalf of Adam and select the items he thinks are appropriate. Once the manager is done or the end user, they click Submit. It will check our segregation of duty violations. It will check to make sure that this access is in line with the type of job Adam has. And then it will create the ticket on the back end. It will look something like this. Here are the list of all the access requests coming from SailPoint's platform into ServiceNow. Inside here, we're capturing each one of the requested items, who requested it and how, and we're populating the information and we're closing the ticket. This way, ServiceNow has all of the metrics involved. This could also send it over to ServiceNow and require some additional steps. And then we will wait for those steps to be updated, fulfilled, and once they're done, we'll actually go back and provision the access. This was a very brief overview of our ticket integration. Again, if you would like to receive a more in-depth demonstration on this, please reach out and request a demonstration. Next, let's look at the API integration. Through our service catalog integration with ServiceNow, we're able to use their rich APIs to enable some of what we do right inside the ServiceNow interface. Let's take a look at what that might look like right here. So in here, I'm inside the ServiceNow portal. I can go to request to order something. Inside here, I click the SailPoint catalog access requests. And I can select our very familiar user, Adam Kennedy. And then I'm able to check his access. That will come back with all of the access that Adam currently has across the enterprise. Additionally, it will enable me to request additional access on his behalf right here inside the ServiceNow interface. As I'm done, I click Order Now. This hands this directly over to the SailPoint interface. We can go through our segregation of duty checks. We can make sure this is in line with the job function that Adam has across the enterprise. We can also go through the checks on approvals that we already have built in for this particular type of access. However, the user inside the ServiceNow construct is unaware of all of that. The end user, Adam Kennedy, Adam Kennedy's manager, and this end user will all be notified the request has been made and when the request is completed. So that was really short. What are the net benefits? The integration of SailPoint with ServiceNow supplies a couple of very big benefits. It can create a very familiar interface for people requesting access. They can go about it either from the SailPoint side or the ServiceNow side and still get the rich feature sets of both. It enables business people to get access to all apps. So the access request inside, potentially the ServiceNow interface, can reach out across the vast number of connectors that SailPoint is very used to interacting with. Last but not least, we're making sure that your organization is always audit ready. By recording all the information about who's requested it, how they're requesting it, segregation of duty violation checks, and recording all the information about the access people have over time, we're able to supply managers, reviewers, and auditors with information not only about the access people currently have, but also access they previously had, as well as information about how they got it and when they got it. Hopefully you found this information useful. Like I said, it's a very high level overview today. We had a very short amount of time. Please reach out to us with more information. We would love to show you a more in-depth demonstration. Thank you.